Come on, say, look where he's brought us from. Put your hands together. I keep wondering why, why my Jesus you still care. Still cares about me. He could have left me.
to San Francisco Temple Christian Assembly Friday night Bible study. It's Friday night, y'all. We're happy that you're able to join us here for our service on tonight. We thank God that the presence of the Lord is in this place because the Lord is letting us know that as you join us each Friday night that uh, the presence of the Lord is here because we're two or three are gathered in the name of the Lord that he is in the midst. So we thank God for you being here joining us live streaming or however method you are, we thank God for your being with us. We thank the Lord for our continuing our Bible study. On tonight, we will be studying in Psalms 25. So we ask you to get your pencil and paper out and let's get started studying the word of God. We're going to go ahead and uh, give our scripture and then offer prayer and then we'll get right into our lesson on tonight. So let's go to our scripture. And our scripture tonight is coming from St. Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 through 33. And the word of God reads thus. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or... Where shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing and the doing of his word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to present the word of God, to study the word of God, even as you have commanded us to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, workmen that, that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So here we are before your presence, Lord, and before these that are gathered before us even now, that, Lord, that you, we ask, will have your way, that you would speak through your vessel here, and that those that hear the word will not only be hearers, but doers of the word. Lord, we pray that you will bless each and every one, and we thank you for it now. We don't have to wait till the battle is over. We can shout hallelujah right now, because it's done in Jesus' name. Thank God, and amen. Well, we're ready now to get started in our study we thank the Lord for the presence of the Lord, and we give honor to God and to our pastor, the Honorable Bishop Dr. Luther Blackwell, in his absence. We just thank God for all of you that are here and joining us, and we thank God for this blessing that he's afforded us over live streaming. So at this time, we're going to get right on into our scriptures. As we said, they're coming from Psalm 25. And we have an outline of how we plan to proceed. Uh, first, we'll talk about the title. And then verses 1 to 7, those are requests to God. And verses 8 to 10, blessings to God. Then we have verse 11, and that is a request to God. Then verses 12 to 15 are blessings of God. And then verses 16 to 22, as we conclude, it will be request to God. Now, I know that you have obviously seen or heard how that this is going back and forth between requests and blessings. This is the way many of our prayers do. David was in prayer here, and we as saints of God need to learn to pray through that whenever prayer is is on our heart or is our regular prayer time, we should take that opportunity to pray through. Don't get stymied and stuck. Many times we're praying and then to God and, and blessing him and all of a sudden something comes to our spirit or maybe the TV is on or some other kind of a distraction and we don't really pray through. Our job, though, 
is not complete until we pray through. Just praying to uh, uh, the Lord and praying up to the, the blessing is not enough. We have to pray all the way through from the time we start all the way to the time the Lord releases us in prayer. So let's learn to pray through. And this lesson today kind of points that out. As we go through, you'll see that the need is today is for us as saints of God to pray through. Don't get stuck. God bless you on that. So let's go on and look at our lesson now. The title of this is simply a Psalm of David. Obviously, David was the author of this psalm, but we notice that there's nothing else along with that. As in many of the psalms that David wrote, there's an explanation as to whom David or the other psalmists is writing. In this case, it just simply says a psalm of David, which lets us know that it's something like if the shoe fits you, wear it. In other words, if the scriptures are something that you can relate to, then go ahead and take these as your own uh, scriptures and, and, and work with them and let the Lord use these scriptures to help you through your times of need. So we're going on into our verses. As we proceed, just realize this, that God is the one who we're praying to. But at the same time, our prayer should not uh, be a lengthy a litany list of babblings to God. Many times people uh, get on their knees and they pray and they're just talking to God and never give the Lord a chance to talk back. So let us realize that prayer should be a two-way uh, communication. So let us know that as we go through this psalm that David, a man after God's own heart, I had the opportunity to speak to the Lord, but at the same time to realize God's blessings. So let's look at uh, this first verse. And it reads thus, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. In this verse, David is offering his soul, just giving over to the, to the Lord, his innermost being. And he's telling the Lord that I'm offering this to you. This is a worship time for David. David was a man who was not the kind of person who needed a lot of prompting, a lot of pumping. So it wasn't like that David was uh, coerced into lifting up his hands and lifting up his soul. He did that automatically because he had a passion for the Lord and a passion for prayer. And the Bible lets us know in Psalms 143 and 8, it says, cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. For in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. The psalmist here in this verse was saying, I'm lifting up my soul. My innermost being is up to, unto you, Lord. And so here David was doing just that. And David mentioned here in our next verses about being uh, not allowing. He said, these are request, requests to allow God not. So look at what he was saying. These are the negative side of something. Verses 2 and 3, you'll get the gist of it in a minute. Oh, my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Here, David was saying to the Lord, I trust you, Lord. I'm waiting on you. I'm believing you, Lord. So don't let me be ashamed in front of my enemies here. Don't let them triumph over me. My trust is in you, Lord. I'm not concerned that they're many and mighty and maybe much more than I but I'm trusting in you, Lord. And he says, don't let anyone that's waiting on you, Lord, don't let them ever be ashamed because their trust is in you, Lord. Let them be ashamed, though, that transgress without a cause. What did he mean by without a cause? He means that sometimes people will do things to you 
unprovoked. Nothing you did, nothing you said, but they just don't like the way you look. That we see so much of that going on today. People don't like you because of your race, your color, your creed. Don't like you because your eyes suit, sit too close together. So they just pop you one. Sometimes it's only with the fist. Other times they'll ram you in the car on the highway. Other times they'll shoot you because they have a, a mind to do something without cause. David said, don't let the people who wait on you, Lord, be ashamed. Let those that transgress without a cause be ashamed. Let them know that they're not going to be able to harm God's people. If they do, they're not going to get away. They might get by, but they're not going to get away. So here, David was letting them know that, uh, asking the Lord here that, Lord, don't let them get away. Don't let them get away at all. Let's go on to our next verses and see what David is saying. Now, this part, these two verses, verses 4 and 5, are verses that acknowledge or the, God's leadership. He was asking God for God's knowledge. Listen to this. Verses 4 and 5 of our lesson. Show me, Lord. Show me my, thy ways. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. David was saying here, show me your ways. I want to know. I want to get to know you, Lord. I want to get to know you better. I want to know your ways. I want you to teach me your paths. The way you go is the way I want to go. The paths you take are the paths that I want to take. David said here, I want to know more about you, Lord, your ways. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 kind of point that direction too. But it lets us know that God's thoughts are far above ours. And so we need to learn his ways and his thoughts. Verses, 50, verses 8 and 9 of Isaiah 55 reads thus. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God's ways are what we are, should be searching for. They're higher than ours, much higher than ours. His thoughts are higher than ours. Psalm 16 and 11, then will thou show me thy path of life, the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Show me the path of life. Life is in Christ. Show me the life of Christ. Then I'll be able to enjoy the fullness of life. Psalms 117 and 2 says, For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. The psalmist David was saying that he wanted to wait on the Lord all the day. Well, he knows, even as the writer said here in Psalms 117, that his kindness is great towards us, and the truth endureth all, or that is forever. Let's go on and look at further into our, our lesson now. If we look at verses... Six and seven. These verses now, see, we've been going back and forth a bit. But now these verses, six and seven, are for God to, for us to, that is the psalmist was asking for the Lord to remember and then not to remember some other things. Some things we want the Lord to remember and some things we don't want him to remember. We want him to forget all about it. Verse 6 is one of remembrance. It says, remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, 
for if they have been ever of old. And then verse 7 is kind of the opposite. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Let's go back to verse 6 and look at this. David was saying, asking the Lord to remember his tender mercies and loving kindness. David was appealing to the Lord to think about himself. Now, the Lord doesn't forget anything. The Lord doesn't really need us to prompt him to remember. God knows everything. But David wanted the assurance that God would keep in mind this as he was going on further into his prayer. God has uh, a great compassion for us and a great love for us. So he asked the Lord to remember his tender mercies and loving kindness. Isaiah 43 and 26 says, put me in remembrance. Plead us to, let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. God said to, to us through Isaiah to put me in remembrance. Remind me about things. It's okay. It's all right to remind the Lord about things that will affect your life. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 talks about the Lord's compassion, his tender loving care, his compassion. And it reads thus, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. This is the loving God that David wanted to pray to and was praying to. He wanted that God to show his compassion, even as he had needs. He wanted God to enter in to make an atonement, to make an adjustment, to make an intercession on his behalf. Psalms 89 and 33 says, nevertheless, my loving kindness, this talks about God's loving kindness, his benevolent, benevolent affection. He says, nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. God's not going to take his loving kindness from us. He loves us too much, nor will his faithfulness ever fail. His word is sure. All the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen. So David was saying that in verse 6, asking the Lord to remember. But on the other hand, in verse 7, he was asking the Lord not, not to remember the sins of his youth or his transgressions. Don't remember all those things. David must have had a reminder coming to him while he was praying that I've done some crazy things. I've done some crazy things, especially when I was young. Lord, don't remember those things. Don't, don't hold it. Right now, Lord, I want you to just think about the goodness, your goodness so that when I ask you, Lord, these requests, Lord, that you'll know, Lord, that you're so good and you're so kind. You're so patient with me. Thank you, Lord. I can start thanking you now for all your goodness, all your mercy, your tender loving care. But don't remember my youthful sins, Lord, nor my transgressions. He didn't want God to come bring those back to him because he knew that the paths of the Lord, I'm getting ahead of myself there. He knew that like in Psalms 43, that whatever he had done, whatever he had done in his youth or any other time, according to Isaiah 43 and 25, he says, I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. God is the one that's going to blot out those sins. And so David knew that he would do that for him. David knew that when he called upon the Lord, that the Lord would be there to blot out his transgressions. So he said, don't remember my youthful sins, Lord. Don't remember them, Lord. Don't remember them. And God gave him assurance that he wouldn't. 
Let's go ahead and look at our next verses here, verses 8 to 10. These verses, again, go to God's blessings. Let's read them. It says, good and upright is the Lord. You know, when we pray sometimes, God, I don't care what our requests are, sometimes God will remind us of his goodness. So we begin to bless him in the midst of our trials and tribulations that we're enumerating to the Lord. God will give us something to encourage us. And here he says, the psalmist David says, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. In these verses here, David was declaring some blessings of the Lord. He was declaring them to sinner, for sinners, for the meek, and for such as keep his covenant and testimonies. David said that these blessings are attributable to God's goodness and his uprightness. Luke 18 and 19 says, And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good save one. That is God. And in this verse we see that even Jesus was declaring that it is God who is good. So David was right on target when he said, good and upright is the Lord. <laughs> he had that right. He had it right. Hallelujah. God is good. Do I have a witness out there? Can anybody say God is good? All the time and all the time, God is good. Well, Webster describes good as virtuous and commendable and certainly uh, Jesus uh, was good, but he said God is the one that's good. Now, Webster describes upright in this way. It says marked by strong moral integrity. So when David said God is good and upright, it lets us know that truly God was upright in his attributes and character. Certainly we can depend upon God and his word and its righteousness. Psalms 92 and 15 says, to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Truly, God is good and upright. David says, therefore, because of that, now, because of that, he's going to teach sinners. He's going to guide the meek in judgment. And he's going to teach the meek. Let's talk about this for sinners now. For sinners, those are people who miss the mark, the mark of righteousness. And all of us were there at one time or another. We were there as sinners until we accepted Jesus Christ. So the sinners here are those would be, who would be the ones who have not accepted. Well, in, in that time when David wrote it, it would be for those who had not accepted the righteousness of the Lord God. But for to, today, it would, a sinner would be the one who has not accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior. So for the sinners, the Lord is going to teach them in the way. Now, what is the way? The way of holiness. So that they can be aware of what God requires. Deuteronomy 10, 12, and 13 says... And now, Israel, what does the Lord God require of thee? But to fear the Lord, thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord, thy God, with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep his commandments, the commandments of the Lord, and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. This is what God requires. So the sinner needs to know that in order to be able to come over on this side. So he has to hear the word of God. The Bible says, follow peace with all men and holiness, which, are, which no man shall see the Lord. So he has to know holiness, what is all, that there's a difference. So that's how 
he, God is, will teach the, the sinner. And the Bible says in Romans 10, what and how will the sinner be taught? He's a sinner. How is he going to be getting all the teachings of the Lord? Well, it's through a prophet or preacher. Romans 10, 13 and 15 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful of the feet are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. This is letting us know that God has a way to be able to reach the sinner, to teach him what he needs in order to be saved. Now, what about the meek? It says that God is going to guide him. First of all, the meek is somebody whose attitude is an attitude of humility toward God and towards other people, towards people. And that springs from a recognition that God is in control. Because the meek has accepted the Lord, the Lord can now guide him in judgment. So what do we, what do we mean by that? The guidance of the Lord is where the meek then would have get practical directions on how to walk, how to talk, how to live holy. His steps will be ordered by the Lord. The Lord will carry him through and teach him his ways as he goes this way and travels this way. The Lord will reveal unto him what to do, what to say. He will guide him in a spirit of, so that, of discernment so that he'll know how to choose right from wrong, good from bad. He won't do it himself. It'll be the spirit of the Lord that's in him because greater is he that is in you, you who are saved, than he that is in the world. So he would get this guidance from the Lord. And then the Lord would then teach him his way. Step by step, the Lord would teach him as he goes humbly forward. The Lord then would teach him his ways. And what about the the, uh, such as keep the covenant of the, test, of the Lord's testimonies. David said, all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. The paths of the Lord are his promises and his, prov his providences. And the Bible says in Psalms 86 and 15, but thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and graciousness, long-suffering, and plenteous in mercy and truth. So the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. So then in verse 11, David then turns back to a request. He was blessing the Lord at first, talking about the blessings of the Lord and, and praising God in his prayer. Now, perhaps he's re something came to him, a distraction. And now he's recalling maybe some of his youthful sins. Maybe he's recalling something else that happened in his life. We don't know exactly what it is, but all of a sudden, in the middle of his blessing, the Lord, he tells the Lord in verse 11, For, my, for thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. Maybe he thought about something. Maybe it was a past. You know, the enemy has a... Has a a, a, a propensity to try to bring back old sins. But the Bible lets us know today that old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So whenever that uh, enemy tries to bring up something of your past that's under the blood, you say, get behind me, Satan. I rebuke you. And you bind that demon and get him out of your, out of your mind and spirit. So David then can go, could go right on after doing that to verses 12 to 13 and 14 and 15. He went on now to blessing God in his prayer. So let's read those verses. It says, what man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. 
His soul shall dwell at ease and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. Mine eyes are ever towards the Lord for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. So the fear here that David is mentioning to the Lord, what man is he that feareth? It's a reverent fear. It's not a fear of being afraid. It's a reverent fear. Psalms 37 and 30, 23 says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way. Let's look at verse 12 here. Go back to that. His soul shall dwell at ease and his seed shall inherit the earth. Psalms 37 and 11 says, but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Let's go back again to verse 14, talking about the secret of the Lord. It says, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. As a backup, Jesus even said here in John 7 and 17, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine of whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. In other words, God has secret things. So the secret things belong to the Lord, but those things which are revealed, they're for us and for our children as well. So God has a way to speak to us. And verse 15, I want to look at that again. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. And in verse, in Psalms 123 and 2, behold, as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their masters, as, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord, our God, until he have mercy upon us. Are you willing to wait? Are you willing to trust God until he shows and manifests his blessings upon you? Don't get tired. Uh, no matter how hard you've been working and what results you've seen, know that the Lord has not forgotten you. Our last verses, that's a request to God. And I'm going to read right through them, verses 16 through 22. And it reads thus, Turn thee unto me, and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. This is the way he saw himself. He needed God to turn to him. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Oh, bring thou me out of my distresses. He saw himself as being so overwhelmed by tr troubles. And he said to God, look upon my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. The things that he was going through, he wanted God to look upon that and forgive him of any sins that he may have committed. He goes on in verse 19, consider my enemies, for they are many and they hate me with cruel hatred. Look on them, Lord. And I don't know if he was trying to say almost sick them, Lord, but he wanted God to look upon them and do unto him as he would do. Because vengeance does belong to the Lord. And verse 20, oh, keep my soul, deliver me. Let not me be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. The last verse is on behalf of Israel. Redeem Israel, O oh God, out of all his troubles. And we too are to pray for our nation. Pray, pray, saints, for our nation and our leaders because so much is going on. And our prayers are the only thing that can keep things from totally falling apart. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. Don't think that your prayers don't count. Pray, saints, and pray through. Don't quit. Believe God and God will manifest himself.
we thank God for our lesson on tonight, kind of summing together, pray through. Don't stop. When you're praying, though you might be encountering things that enter into your prayer that make you feel like, oh, I've committed sin, but know that God has forgiven you and know that when de the devil tries to interrupt your prayer, that you have the power to rebuke him and get him out of your prayer and get the Lord to replace that spot that he was in. Know this, that the Lord hears your prayers and that when you pray through, God will come through. He'll never fail you. So we're going to offer prayer now for those that of you of you that have joined us on tonight. And because maybe your prayer life has not been what it should be. But God can make the difference beginning tonight. <laughs> yes, he can. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for speaking to our heart. And we pray even now, Lord, that you will bless each and every one that heard the word. Lord, let them know that, that you, they have a way of communicating directly with you. They don't have to go through another, another man, priest, or otherwise. That you have spoken and that they can hear the voice of God through your word. Let them know, Lord, that you are there with them as they pray. And if any interruptions come, that they have the power to rebuke it. Let them know, Lord, that they have a responsibility to develop a prayer life. Such where when they pray, Lord, that they'll have confidence to know that you hear and that you will answer their prayer. And we thank you for it now. Let this be Become a habit to each and every one so that they can become prayer warriors that this world will know that the presence of the Lord is in, is in the place that wherever they are, that God is right there. And that if someone needs to call upon him, that he will be there for them. So, Lord, we thank you for our lesson, and we just give you the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Well, that's our, that's our lesson for tonight. We hope that you have enjoyed it, and we hope that you can join us on next Friday night for our Bible Friday night Bible study here at San Francisco Temple Christian Assembly. May God bless you until then and always. God bless you.